Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on string builder, string buffer and string formatting in Java. And we're going to need these concepts before we look at things like the um, dot equals and the two string methods in future tutorials. So I've got a main method in Eclipse here and I want to start by remarking that in Java it's common to do things like this. I create a string, I call it info, let's say, and I'll set that equal to an empty string and then I'll say info um, plus equals um, my name is Bob and then let's have info plus equals um, and then just an empty space, just a space and then info plus equals plus equals I am a builder so if I output this text now to add the semicolon there with a sysout info it's gonna say my name is Bob space I'm a builder now this is actually quite inefficient and the reason for that is that um, in Java strings are immutable. Once you've created a string you can never change it and it looks here as though you're changing the string. You start off here with a string that's equal to um, just nothing and here it seems like you're appending to it some text and some more text and more text and outputting it but in fact what is happening is um, info is initially set to an empty string and it's and this empty string is is going to be a empty string for the rest of its life in this program what's happening here is we're creating a new string um, made from this empty string plus this text and we're reassigning the info variable to it and here we are creating a new string made from all the previous text this and this, where we are um, and this space and then we're reassigning that to info. So basically every time you do this you're not changing the original string, you are creating a new string which is somewhat inefficient. Um, and if you've just got a little program and there's just a little bit of this going on, it doesn't matter, but if it's a big program or you're doing this in a in a loop let's say, or you're doing it um, in lots and lots of different places then this could slow down your program or maybe use a lot of memory so to get around that we've got the string builder class and the way string builder works is and let's first put a comment on here saying inefficient has inefficient got one end or two ends in it I think one okay um, now the proper way to do this is we create a string builder object, I'll call it SB, set that equal to a new string builder and um, you don't have to supply an initial value for it but you can if you want in the constructor here. So this string builder is going to be initialized with this string and now um, to add text to it I can say sb.append and let's have my name is Sue and um, sb.append um, space like this and sb.append I am a lion tamer and what I'm doing here is um, this string builder is having text appended to it but in doing the append we're not creating a new string builder we're just um, literally modifying the contents of the existing string builder which is more efficient than doing this where we create a new string every time and finally to get my text back I can do sb.toString so if I do let's say sysout sb.toString that will get me the text that this string builder now contains so if I run that it's pretty much the same as you get from doing this except that it's more efficient so let's put a comment here more efficient efficient 
Um, and that's really the whole point of String Builder. It's really just to give you a more memory efficient way of appending text. And there's nothing really more complicated to it than that. There is, however, um, a kind of shortcut you can use because the append method returns a um, reference to the String Builder object itself, meaning you can use method chaining. And what that looks like is I can say String Builder. Um, Let's just call this s equals new string builder and you can do stuff like s dot append um, my name is um, I don't know Roger and then you can say dot append um, space or you could put string variables in here, in, this, in these appends, of course. And append, um, I am a sky diver. Exciting professions. And again, it's, it's just the same. So if I do this out now, I can say s.2 string to actually get the string. And if I run that, the same again. So, um, I formatted this um, in a way to kind of make it look nice on the screen, but really all I'm doing is um, I'm just chaining methods because append is returning a reference to this, so I can call append on it again like that. And that's basically it. There's also a class called um, string buffer, and string buffer is just a thread safe version of string builder. So if you're doing if you're creating multi-threaded versions and you need a string builder that's safe to access from multiple threads, well, I can't say I've ever done this myself, but apparently what you would need to use would be string buffer. And string builder is historically more, um, it's newer than string buffer. So um, in older code, you'll see references to string buffer rather than string builder, but they are exactly the same. It's just that this is more lightweight because it's not thread safe. So that's that. Um, and what I also want to show you in this tutorial is some stuff about advanced string formatting. So um, we've already seen that in strings, let's put a comment here, formatting. In strings, you can um, do stuff like I could um, embed um, tabs and backslash n in it, new line characters by just using um, uh, backslashes. Well, um, so for example, I can say um, here is a um, is some text, and I could say backslash. Where are we? Uh, I've got a new keyboard which is I'm still not used to. Backslash n. Um, so that's a tab. Um, that was a tab, and let's have a new line here. Um, backslash n that was a new line so we've we've already seen in previous tutorials I think uh, backslash t and backslash n which are quite handy backslash t is a tab character backslash n a new line character and you can also control new lines of course by um, print ln will output a new line after the end of your text while print without the ln won't so if I run that um, if there was some text um, after this, sys out more more text, then if I just do print, I'm going to get this text on the same line, whereas with ln, it would be on the next line, like this. Um, so that's pretty simple, um, but you can also use um, there are some methods that take a string format and um, an example of that would be um, if I do sys out here then I can change this from print ln, print line, to print f, print format and the way that works is you can have a string here um, and you can embed in it special formatting characters um, and the most, the two most useful, maybe three most useful, are 
Firstly, um, if you want to format a integer here, I can say percent %d, and I can put a, um, I can pass this an extra argument with a value. Um, it could be a variable or just a literal value, as in this case. Let's say five, and what's going to happen is um, printf is going to look for formatting characters here, and then for each formatting character, it's going to look for a, an argument here, and it's going to put this value in here, except it's going to replace this percent %d with this. So d stands for, actually I don't know, but it means um, number. So um, let's have another one in here. Total cost is such and such, and then um, uh, number, or let's say quantity is percent %d. Now I've got two formatting fields in here, two percent Ds, so I need to pass two arguments here. So let's say 5 and 120. And if I run that, um, it says total cost 5, quantity is 120. And you might be wondering what the point of doing that is, rather than using, you know, concatenation. Well, these formatting characters allow you more control than mere concatenation would do. So um, let's also put a new line on the end of there because printf doesn't, unlike println, printf doesn't output a new line on the end. And it's important to kind of separate this mentally. So here I've got three characters in a row, percent %d semicolon, but the percent %d is a, is a kind of self-contained formatting character. And for every percent %d you've got in your format string, this is the format string, you're going to have to have an, an argument here to replace it with. So, um, percent %d, um, the main most useful thing you can do is, you can, if you want, specify a width to um, output this in. So I could say here, 10, um, or maybe let's, let's have it here, and that's going to mean that um, this, um, this kind of um, value is output in a field that's 10 characters wide. So if I output that, you can see it looks like this. And you can, if you want, you can left align it in that field by making it minus 10, like that. So let's say you've got a loop um, for int i equals naught, i less than, um, less than 20, i plus plus, and you could output here, you could, you could say sys say sys out and I'll change this to a for a print line to a print format. And I'll say here um, let's output percent to D um, and then a colon and um, I'll, I'll have some text here. I don't really know what but some text here, let's say, and then let's just output i. Now if I run that, um, oh yeah, and let's also put a new line here, backslash n. If I run this, the great thing about it is, you can see down here, that it all lines up. So that if, if I'd use concatenation here, because um, single digits obviously take up less width than double digits. Um, this text will become misaligned when I got to 10. But here, because I've said, OK, print them all using a width of 2, it's going to all be nicely aligned. And that's, that's kind of what it's used for. I could also, of course, put um, a negative in there and then get the numbers to align to the left if I want. So there we go. Um, so the way to read this is there's always a percent and at the end, there's a single character that specifies what kind of thing you're formatting. Here I'm formatting integers represented by D for some reason. And in the middle, you can have extra kind of flags that specify other things about how to format it. Now, um, another really useful one is if you just want to put strings in there, you can use percent %s. So percent %s, and then I've got to supply another argument here. Here is some text. So if I run that, it's going to say, here is some text down here. 
you've got to make sure that you have as many arguments as you've got formatting characters, formatting fields. And probably the most useful of all is um, the floating point formatter. So if I say here, sys out, um, let's see, uh, total value, let's say, percent %f. Now, percent %f means floating point, so I can put, for example, uh, 5.6 here. Um, let's have a new line there as well, backslash n. Um, and I'm going to just put some comments on here. So, formatting um, integers. And here, let's say, formatting formatting floating point values. And if I run that, so um, I've got an error here because I forgot to change that to print f. So if I run that, it's going to output my um, my floating point value here with a default number, with like a default precision. But um, the floating point formatter is really flexible because if I say between the percent and the f, I can give it the number of decimal places I want to use. So let's say 0.2. So you need a dot and a two and a two or however many decimal places you want. And if I run that, it's now got um, two decimal places. And just to illustrate that, if I have more values here, it makes no difference. It's still going to say, it's just going to give me um, two decimal places. And um, you can see, actually, it's, it's also rounding off my value. So I've got 5.687. And it's because it's I've said output two decimal places, it's rounding it to 5.69, which is really handy. And you can combine that with a um, width if you want. So let's have another one here. And let's say, um, just give it a value here. And I'll have it to... Um, one decimal place and before the decimal point here I can have a separate width field that specifies how many characters to use to output that in so let's say 10 and if I run that actually maybe that's a bit much let's say um, well if I've got one decimal place and I've got three digits here in total that's going to take up um, five characters um, including the point. So if I say 5 there, it's going to output with no extra space around it. But if I have 6 here, then and it's going to write a line in this space here. So the 6, the width here, includes all the characters that you're outputting. So the ones before the decimal point, the space for the decimal point itself, and the characters after. I've just got one um, value after the decimal point here. And it's right aligning within that field and it's left padding it with spaces. And if I want it to align it to the left, I can put a negative there. And now it will output space after. Um, so um, I hope that's um, reasonably clear. I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com so you can take a look at your leisure. And um, in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at the uh, methods of the object, um, object, the object class, I should say. Um, like, for example, the dot equals and two string, as I say, which are kind of standard methods that you need to know about. And after that, we'll go on to look at stuff like inheritance. So join me again next time. And until then, happy coding.